So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the People's Church here in Partington. It is a beautiful sunny day. And uh, we're grateful that you're here with us. I think there's a few people who are holidaying this weekend. There's a few people who are not well uh, this weekend. But we're here. God's here. We're going to have a good time together as we worship God. Just uh, a couple of things to... Uh, let you know about. We've set up a little, little crash corner in that far corner for the little ones. So if there are kids who are uh, younger than school nursery, that corner is just for you to enjoy uh, through the service. Uh, so you're really free to use that. We are trying a different tech setup this morning because we had all sorts of character refining moments over Easter weekend. Uh, where the tech just wasn't happy. So uh, we're trying something else. Hopefully it's going to work. And uh, hopefully it's working for those who are on Zoom. If you're on Zoom and it's not working, please text Andy. And uh, hopefully he won't hear from you. Hopefully he won't hear from you. Uh, what else? Bible. Bible. We're going to start with the Bible. So this is, these are some verses from Psalm 89, just declaring the goodness of God, the glory of God, and our worship to God. And I thought these were some great verses to start with in our time together this morning. So Psalm 89 says this, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever and that you established your faithfulness in heaven itself. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, and your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above could compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He, he is more awesome than all who surround him. Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence. They rejoice in your name all day long. They exult in your righteousness. For you, God, are their glory and strength. Let's pray together and let's worship the Lord together. Lord God, thank you that the heavens declare your wonders. The heavens declare your glory and your faithfulness surrounds you. Your righteousness goes before you. And Lord, we gather here today to celebrate your faithfulness, to celebrate your love to celebrate your goodness. Lord, you are our glory. You are our strength. You are our joy. You are our song. And we worship you and we love you. We pray that you would meet with us this morning in all that we do together uh, in our time, Lord. Meet with us and change us by the power of your spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's stand if we're able and Mike and Beth are going to lead us in song worship. Good morning, everybody. Let's join together in song as one song as we worship God. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to Just as you are to worship, come, 
Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that you are faithful, that you are strong, that you are good, that you are with us, that you are for us. Your love endures forever, God. We thank you for that truth and we praise you for that truth that changes everything. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Grab a seat. <laughs> Great. We've got some notices that we want to share with you, and we've then got a little bit of stuff that we're going to do all together. So first notice, next Sunday is the first Sunday in May. So the first Sunday of the month, we have our Zoom prayer night, 7.30, and you are really, really welcome to, uh, to join us for that. If you want to, on Zoom, we'll send the codes out. Same codes as always, though, so uh, nothing's changed in that respect. And then this is a notice from Beth on behalf of the Eden team. So remember, you did send it to me, remember? Yeah, yeah. So on Thursdays, we host an after-school group for year seven, eights, and nines from 4.30 to 5.30. Uh, but we really need some volunteers for this group that would be willing to help out from four till six, which includes the setup and the pack-down time. 
It would be great if anyone is interested in volunteering or to be praying that we can get some leaders for this. So if you want to volunteer, let Beth know. If you aren't in a position to volunteer, please would you pray with us that, that the right people step forward for that. Is that okay? That would be brilliant. So last weekend was Easter Sunday. It was the, the end of a busy week, a combination of different things that have been going on through the week. But we just wanted to share some Easter highlights with you and really just to say thank you to everybody who served, got involved, came along, because uh, I think we, you know, we have blessed the community well this Easter time. So let's see the highlights. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who served, thank you to everyone who got involved, thank you to everyone who came along. Uh, amazing week, reaching the community, blessing the community and celebrating the resurrection. So thank you everybody. Um, this morning, we are going to be exploring what happened next, the bit after the resurrection of Jesus, because obviously the story didn't end on Easter Sunday. The story continued. Uh, into all the what happened next after the resurrection. So just to get us in the mood for what happened next, we are going to play a little game, and you're never going to guess what game we're going to play. We're going to play what happened next. And uh, just to get us in the mood, and uh, hopefully the videos will work. And what we'll do is we'll play this side against this side. And... Uh, when it's, Karen, when it says what happened next, that's the moment to pause it, okay? Are we ready for what happened next? Yes. We're going to watch the first clip, we're going to pause it, we're going to take an answer from each side, and then we're going to, I'm going to work out who gets the point. Okay, let's roll the video. On 12 for par.
Louis Sazen, king of the swingers. Louis. JB Holmes is as bull as there. Is it going to be? Right, let's pause it there. So he's hit the ball. He's getting near the hole. There's a ball in the way. What happened next? Emily wants to have a go. He knocks the other ball in the hole. Okay. I know he wants to play. <laughs> okay, let's let's watch the video. Let's see what happened next. For par. Louis Sazen, king of the swingers. Louis. JB Holmes is as bull as there. Is it going to get round it somehow or other? Oh, it's... No! No, go on, go on! Oh, that's unbelievable! Oh, goodness! <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that? Never in my life! I don't, I don't think anyone can get a point there. Knocks the other ball out of the way, and then his ball goes in the hole, I think. I don't think we can give any points for that. We keep things tight. They were she said it knocks the line. Sorry. <laughs> I know it's, I know it's Easter. I know it's Easter, but even so. Okay, let's let's see the next clip. Let's see the next clip. And that leaves one other person, Gillian. It might be you. Oh, come on. So it's between Linford and Gillian. The public have decided the person they want to see face the live Bush Tucker trial is. Gillian. Oh, come on. Come and join us, Gillian. Could you? Gillian, come over here. Come and join us, please. Good luck, Gillian. Come on, come here. Come here. We can explain it all, don't worry. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to this side first. We're gonna, I'm gonna ask Lily. I'm gonna ask Lily, but we might go to Nicole as well. Nicole, uh, Lily, what do you think happens? She faints. You think she faints? Anyone on this side? Anyone on this side? Go, go on, go to Freddie this time. Pretends to faint. Pretends to faint. Or actually faints. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens next. Come and join us, yourself. please. Good luck, Jillian. Come on, man. come here. Come here. We'll explain it all, don't worry. We'll explain exactly what's going on, okay? Oh, oh, oh. Let's get Bob in. Bob. Bob. Okay, bring the oxygen in, please. Let's get okay. The gas. Jeremy, if you can just hold we the lead. Oh, we I did. see. Okay. What are the doing? I'll do it. I don't mind. I don't okay. mind. Gillian? Right, do we think that was a real pain? Or was it a real pain? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it a real pain? Is it a real pain? I'm going to say. Was it, was it fake? Yeah. Right. She went to hospital. If she goes to hospital, it's real for me. Yeah. It's real for me. Yeah. Well, you, you, can, you can Google it later, though, and text me. I would never want to be on that. Text me if I got that wrong. So, so she fainted, and she didn't end up doing the trial. They, to get, they went to an advert break. That's how real it was. They went to an advert break. Um, this is already causing far more controversy than I thought it would. There's two more rounds, and then there's a final round. Um, Let's go to the third clip. Things happens at the back. 
The violin player throws eggs at Simon Cowell. That's what they're saying. Um, what do you think on this side? You see how the doors are opening yeah. when it stops? I think they're going to fall on them. The doors are going to fall on them? Okay, let's, that's the answer. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We'll get to the bottom of what that was. So, so well done for carrying on. You're very professional. Um, and, we, and we cross over to the. Sorry, you all right? Are you okay? I did actually send a, a tweet out yesterday saying I don't like eggs, and I really don't like <laughs> eggs now. I have no idea what that was about. So whoever's watching, I do. There we go. So some random protester comes out from between the doors and starts throwing eggs at Simon Cowell. We're going to give the points to this side. So it's one all. I think that makes it one all with two rounds left. So it could be a draw, who would have thought it? But um, but there could still be a win. Let's have the final uh, sort of secular clip. This is from the world of sport and the Olympics. Whoops. Uh, the Olympics in 99. 92 even. We're going to pause the video there. Okay, let's... Yeah, they did, they did. They did. Let's ask Georgia what she thinks. <laughs> Let's see the clip. Thank you. 
there we go. I think, I think you both got that right. interview with uh, that guy, Derek Redman. Derek Redman, what's his name? They're on a... Not Rodman, they're not Dennis. I think it's Derek Redman. Um, who said, I didn't win the race, but I finished the race. So, there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, let's have the final clip. This is from the Bible. It's the story of a guy called Saul. The Miracle of Mercy, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way. And as he came near Damascus. Okay, let's pause the film there. So he's, he does, he's not too fast. There's a spot, no spoilers here. Um, he's just gone to Damascus. Uh, I can't remember where he's gone. He's on the road, he's not that fond of Christians. What do you think happens, Fond Um, He gets blind. He goes blind. Should we ex expand on that slightly? Maybe with a team with Anna on the front. He, he, if the light comes out, like, you see the bright light and then it makes him blind because it's so bright and he's telling him not to do that. Okay. So he, goes, he sees the bright light, he goes blind. Maybe we could work together to get the full... <laughs> We've got an answer at the back. We've already heard from you, Freddie. Let's go to the back. Yeah, God shows him how to be nice to the Christians. I think we're pretty much there between us. Let's let's watch the clip and let's see what what fully happened. A light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up, and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt and he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, and he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, 
but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. There we go. So, you know what, I think between the two sides we probably got almost got the full answer there. That, that he saw a bright light, that he was blinded, and that God spoke to him and turned his life around, didn't he? From someone who hated Christians to someone who followed Jesus Christ. Which was quite an unexpected thing in Paul's life, wasn't it? A really unexpected thing. Uh, so, we don't always know what's going to happen next, do we? Whether it's uh, someone's going to faint because they don't want to do a trial, even though you know you're going to go in the jungle for those sort of things. Or uh, someone's going to start throwing eggs at you during Britain's Got Talent. Or the dad's going to come in and carry the guy over the line. Or, or God's going to dr dramatically change a person's heart and life and, and the whole direction of where they're going. We don't always know what's going to happen, but we know that God is good and we know that he wants to fulfill his purposes. He wants to transform lives. He wants to build his kingdom. And sometimes his plans surprise us. Sometimes we don't expect what God's going to do. But he's good and he loves us and he's for us. So my challenge for us this week is to read the Bible book of Acts in the New Testament. The bit after the Gospels. And then make a little note of all the ways that God does something unexpected in the lives of people. We try and do that. Read the book of Acts. Get a parent or grown-up to help you, if you want. And, uh, yeah, what ways was God doing something unexpected in, in those moments? Okie dokie. Wonderful. Thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for Andy for getting the technology working. Uh, and for Karen for trying to get the technology working as well. Um, we're going to pray. Our kids and young people are going to go to their groups. And uh, then we're going to get into the Word. So, God, we thank you for... Uh, for this church family that we are, we thank you for the children, for the young people who are part of this church. Uh, Lord, we pray that you bless them this morning as they uh, explore uh, who you are and what you do uh, in their time together. We thank you for those who are serving, and we pray that you bless those who serve as they do so. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Kids, we're going now. Oh, I've just remembered, I had a prize. I had a prize for the what happened next. So if anyone wants the prize, some spiced and crunchy Bombay mix. Anyone? Bat? Yeah, come on. It's bat. Good catch. Um, hopefully all is well. Are we, are we unmuted, Andy? Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about the words. As long as they can hear us, we can put the words in later. Wonderful. So, just to let you know about some exciting things that are coming up. Next week, we are beginning a new preaching series. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> but it's the preaching series with possibly the worst title we've ever had. So, uh, the, the preaching series is going to be called, Did Somebody Say Just Preach? And uh, we're going to be doing this over the summer term. And we're going to be looking at the premise that sharing the gospel is not just about preaching, but it is about building community, sharing our lives of faith with others. And we're going to be exploring Jesus's meals with a mission in Luke's gospel. So we're looking forward to that in the coming months. We've got a few guest speakers. We've got a few one-off Sundays coming up as well. So we hope it's a really good term uh, as we gather. As we've already been discussing this morning, our theme today is what happened next. Last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus, conquering the grave, victory over sin and death, and all that that means to us and for us. But of course, we know the story didn't end at the resurrection, and today we're exploring the what happened next, the bit after the resurrection. Uh, it's going to be quite simple, but I hope it's going to be quite helpful as well. We're not going to look at all of the accounts of the resurrection, as this would take us a while. There are 21 uh, references, at least, stories of resurrection appearances in the New Testament, mostly, as you would expect, are in the Gospels, but also in the book of Acts and in Paul's letters to the church in Corinth. 
And Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians 15. He says this, I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then to the 12, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. So that's what Paul writes. He writes freely and openly uh, to the church in Corinth, saying Jesus has appeared to loads of people, various different people, over a period of time, uh, and we all saw him, and some of those people are still alive, so you can ask them if you don't believe me. And I want us to spend some time just examining some of these uh, resurrection appearances in terms of, well, what do these mean for us? Uh, we're going to look at one from each gospel, and then we're going to pull it all together. That's the hope. And the first of these is in John 20, verse 19 to 23 where we read this, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he'd said this, he breathed onto them and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, that'll do for now. We'll stop there. So this first account that we're looking at, the risen Christ enters the room where the doors are locked because he can do that in his new glorious resurrection form. And he comes to be with the disciples in their fear and he speaks peace into their fear. Like they were afraid uh, you know, they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. They were afraid, bearing in mind what had happened to Jesus. And they were people who'd been following Jesus, the possibilities of what they could face, what could happen to them. And Jesus comes and meets them in the middle of their fear. And he speaks peace. He speaks peace to their fear. And then he says, I'm sending you out. And he breathes the Holy Spirit onto them. Receive the Holy Spirit. Could you imagine being one of those disciples on that day? All of the things that you're having to process before you. You're fearful for your life. You're fearful for your future. And then the risen Jesus comes into the room. Even though you, you couldn't open the door, he comes into the room and speaks peace to you. But then rather than saying peace to you, let's keep the doors locked. Let's keep our heads down. Let's wait till this all blows over. He says peace to you. And I'm sending you out. I'm sending you out. He sends them out of the comfort zone. The resurrected Jesus meets us where we are. He meets us in our fear and he speaks peace and sends us out in the power of his spirit to reach the lost. I'm not against, uh, I'm not against caution as a person. Some of you probably know that. You're, yeah, I know you're not against caution. Um, Sometimes not rushing into things is helpful, but we are not to live in fear, are we? We are called to not live in fear. Uh, you know, there are so many things that could lead us to live in fear, aren't there? Digesting too much of the news could lead us to live in fear. Uncertainty over our finances could lead us to live in fear. We might have fears over our loved ones, over our health, over our family, over our jobs, over our circumstances, whatever it might be. But the risen Jesus comes and meets us where we are, speaks peace into our lives, into our situations, and sends us out in his name. Let's hold that thought there, because we've got another resurrection appearance to look at. This is in Mark 16, verse 9 onwards. And some of you will have in your Bible, it'll say in really small print, some of the earliest manuscripts do not have these verses in them, which is true but some of them do, and it is in the Bible. So we are going to read these verses. Uh, this is Mark 16, 9 onwards. 
Now, when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he'd cast out seven demons. She went and told those who'd been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and that he'd been seen by her, they would not believe it. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking in the country. That's the road to Emmaus moment that Luke talks about. And then he went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Afterwards, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief, for their hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up serpents with their hands. They will drink deadly poison and it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he'd spoke to them, was taken into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message with the accompanying signs. Now, I'm not here to endorse drinking poison, just for the record. We're going to get there in a moment. But here in Mark's account, we see that, again, Jesus meets the disciples where they are. He meets them in their grief. They were weeping. They were mourning. They were grieving their loss, and they were eating, uh, grieving the loss of the one that they'd been following. And the risen Christ comes and meets them there, meets them where they are. And he transforms their grief into joy. The joy of the reality of the resurrection. And he also brings rebuke as well. You know, it's not all just hugs and cuddles. It's like, why did you not believe Mary? Why didn't you believe her? Maybe their grief had blocked them from having the ability to listen and receive the truth. They were so overwhelmed with sorrow, they couldn't comprehend what Mary was saying. I don't know. But what we do know is that Jesus comes and meets them in their grief. And in joy, he commissions them Go into all the world. And signs of the Spirit of God at work through you will accompany you as you go. And God's providence and God's provision will accompany you as you go. I think that what the Lord is talking about here, I don't think it's a call for us to go, let's start drinking poison and watch God come through for us. I, you know, I don't think that would be wise. I don't think that would be wise. Although if you have had raspberry flavor Coca-Cola, it's not too far off. Um, but I think what it is, is God saying that he's going to pull his people through. You know, God, as his people obediently follow him, that he will pull them through. In dire situations where it seems like, oh, this is really bad, God will go before them, he'll go with them, and he will get them through. And, you know, as Acts goes on, we read about this, don't we? We read about uh, God going before his people as they were broken out of prison, on a couple of occasions, the prison doors crashed open. We read about Paul being unharmed, even though he was bitten by a snake uh, in Malta. We read of shipwrecks and storms. And we read of God getting his people through all this stuff. And we still hear stories today, don't we, of God's miraculous provision and providence for his people in the most difficult circumstances as God comes through for them. Pete Gregg says... Many stories of this in his book, Dirty Glory, uh, one of them being this story of miraculous money that just kept appearing in this woman's cupboard. And she's like opening the, the cupboard and there's more money there. And more and like uh, over the course of a month, uh, God blessed this woman with 28,000 Swiss francs to pay her bills, debts, and then to give away to people who had need. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? If you've not read that book, it's worth a read. It will bless you. But again, from grief to joy, to commission, to spirit-empowered ministry and life as we go in Jesus' name. Third passage, perhaps the most famous one of all the New Testament sort of resurrection appearances, the Great Commission. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them 
to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very ends of the age. In Matthew 28, we're in Galilee, not Jerusalem. The disciples have gone to the place that Jesus told them to go. And they're waiting to meet Jesus there. They're expectant. And the risen Jesus does meet them there as he said he would, where he said he would. And the people worshipped. It is amazing though, isn't it? That even though they see the risen Christ, where he said, when he said, some of them still doubted. Too good to be true? I don't know. Others worshipped, some doubted. I wonder how long they were worshipping before Jesus then gave them these instructions. Because he did give them instructions, didn't he? Go into all the world and make disciples that was the commission jesus called them from doubt to commission from worship to commission make disciples and again we have the promise of his presence he said i am with you always to the very end of the age last one that we're going to look at is luke 24 after the road to emmaus Jesus appeared to the wider group of his disciples, starting in verse 44. And he said to them, These are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So this was not the first resurrection appearance, but Jesus is still seeking to bring transformation in the lives of his people here, not so much emotional it's not so much here from like grief to joy or from fear to peace, but it's, it's sort of from, understand, uh, from lack of understanding to understanding. He opened the scriptures to them and he opened their minds that they would understand how they all pointed to him and how Jesus fulfilled all the scriptures. Again, there's then this instruction, maybe less direct, than on other occasions but there is this call to be witnesses to all nations that, uh, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of jesus for all nations and that you are my witnesses for this again there is then the empowering work and role of the person of the holy spirit in there too the promise of power from on high the resurrection does many things. The resurrected Jesus does many things. This isn't all of the appearances, as we've said, but on a very basic level, an encounter with the risen Jesus does three things, and we see each of them here. The risen Jesus Christ transforms our now, the risen Jesus Christ commissions us to share his message. And the risen Jesus Christ equips us to share that message as we receive the Holy Spirit. He transforms our now, or maybe more accurately, he transforms us in the now. From fear to peace, from grief to joy, from lack of understanding to understanding, from doubt to commission, from only worship to messenger of the gospel. We are called to allow the risen Jesus in to transform our now and to transform us in our now. Yeah? Amen. So really my question is, what is your now? And what do you, what does the Lord need to do in your now? What, is, what does the Lord need to do in you in your now? Because we are called to let him in, to transform us and the situation that we find ourselves in. I wonder how many of us are living as if, you know, even though we celebrated the resurrection last Sunday, we're living as if he's not really on the throne. 
Because right now he's on the throne, isn't he? He's on the throne. He's not on the cross anymore. He's on the throne. We could find ourselves overwhelmed by life, by the world, by circumstances, by our fears, by disappointment, whatever it might be. But I believe, I believe that the risen Jesus wants to come in this morning, enter into our situations, enter into our lives afresh, be God with us, remind us that he's risen, that he reigns, that he's Lord, and that he wants to transform us in our now. Because we are not called to live in fear, are we? We're not called to live in fear. Are we fearful for our future, our family, our finance, our friends? Could do with another F there, but um, let, let the risen Christ come in and meet us in the midst of whatever life throws at us. He comes to transform us in the now. And having transformed us, he commissions us to share the message. We cannot get away from this fact that he calls us to share the message. Here is a combination of Jesus' direct instructions to his people from the passages that we've heard today. This is the mashup. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, proclaiming repentance for the forgiveness of sins in my name to all nations. And if you read on into Acts, you say, well, where, how? In Jerusalem, in Judea, and to the very ends of the earth. We can't get away from it, can we? We can't get away from this call as his people to share the message, to share the hope that we carry, to make disciples, to teach. It's what we're called to do. Now, we are going to look in the coming weeks at how it's not only about preaching, it's about lives shared. But we are called to share Jesus, aren't we? We are called to not, you know, not just be nice people who smile and be patient and polite so that people go, mm, that was a bit weird. You know, we are meant to, to proclaim Christ as well, to share the hope that we have. You know, when was the last time that we shared Jesus with someone who doesn't know him? Not to make us feel bad, but just to go, are we, are we doing the things he called us to do? Now, the good news is that we don't have to do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own strength. But we are called to receive the spirit and then to obediently follow his commands. Like when your mom says, eat your vegetables, we, that's not based on how we feel. It's based on your mom says, eat your vegetables. So you do it, don't you? Think. I did it, but no, um, apart from sprouts. But, you know, Jesus, he, he commands us, go and make disciples. It's not optional. It's not about whether we feel like we should or not, or whether we feel like we can or not. He, he commands us to do it. But we don't do it in our own strength because he gives us the Holy Spirit. You know, he breathes the Holy Spirit on them. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. He says, be clothed with power from on high. And when that happens, signs and wonders will accompany those who believe. Casting out demons, speaking in tongues, healing the sick. He promises his presence. He says, I am with you always, forever. And you will be clothed with power from on high. Are we making time to be clothed with power from on high? Are we making time to receive the Holy Spirit? Jesus wants to do it. He wants to transform us in our now. He wants us to share the message of who he is, the hope that we carry, but he wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit so that we can do these things, so that we can live in his power, not in our own strength. The Holy Spirit was given primarily so that we could go and make disciples, so that we could go and play our part in the Great Commission, not just so that we would feel nice and and fuzzy on a Sunday morning once a week. He gave it to us so that we would play our part. Yes, the Spirit makes us more like Jesus. Yes, he transforms us on the inside, but he comes so that we'd see and know and experience his power at work in us and through us in the world, sharing the good news. Because in the book of Acts, the power of the Spirit is not present in the temple, it's present in the streets, isn't it? As God's people went out in his name in the power of the Spirit. So I've got a few questions for us. 
These aren't to make us feel bad, but they are to help us reflect on where we're at in life so that we might open up to God and his plans and his purposes once again. But are we in need of transformation? Are we in need of transformation? Is our now in need of transformation? Are, am I in need of transformation in the middle of the now? Do we need to open up to the risen Lord again? Will we share the message? Will we step out and actually share the message? And will we be open? Will we be open to being filled afresh with the presence of the Holy Spirit and God's power in our lives? Because there is more of God's presence for all of us. And it may be that we're living like, God, just will you get me through? Will you get me through? But there is more than just getting through that he wants for us. He wants us to do more than that. As I was preparing today, I believe there may be some of us here uh, and we're sort of struggling, you know, in, we're, we're battling, we're, we're suffering, but we're trying to do it in our own strength. And I really believe that God wants to meet us in our now, transform us in our now and fill us afresh with his spirit that we'd know him with us in the now. But he calls us to all three of these things. He calls us to all three. It may be that we need to look again at the balance of our lives to see where we're at, because I honestly believe we probably all need him to move in our lives. You know, lockdown, you know, the last 18 months or whatever, a pause to reflect and review, but have we just gone back to old patterns of how we lived our lives that are unsustainable and don't really glorify God? But he calls us to be transformed in the now, to share the message and to be filled with his spirit. And it's all three. You know, we may love the idea of, of God change me and God fill me. Change my situation and fill me with your spirit. Yes, I'll have those. Oh, Lord, please don't ask me to go and preach the message. He calls us to all three, doesn't he? You know, and, and it may be that we just want the comfort, don't we? Change my situation, fill me with your spirit, let me feel good. He calls us to go and share the message as well. It might be that we're fired up for sharing the message, but actually the truth is if, if we're not allowing him in to change us, and to transform us at the same time, what people get is this kind of mixed up gospel. Become a Christian like me and you can still be really angry and full of rage. Become a Christian like me and let's all gossip together. Do you know what I mean? He, he calls us to be transformed. And he wants to fill us with his power. It's all three. We need the risen Christ to come and do all three as he did in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John in those accounts for those disciples to meet us where we are, to transform us in where we are and how we are, to give us the, fa the fire to share his message and to fill us afresh with the spirit for his mission. And that's all I've got to say, really. We're going to spend some time in prayer as the band come up and, uh, and just invite God to come in. Invite him to do whatever he wants in our lives. So let's stand if we're able to. Let's stand if we're able to. And uh, let's open ourselves up to the Lord. Lord Jesus, last weekend we celebrated your victory. We celebrated that you conquered death, your victory over sin. And we glorify you for that, God. And Lord, today we want to live in the reality of what this resurrection means. Recognizing this morning that you are on the throne. We bring ourselves before you, God. And we say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and fill us afresh. Come Holy Spirit and blow on our lives. Lord God, would you come into our lives and transform us in the now. Whatever we, we know that you need to do in us. 
surgery on our hearts, Lord, surgery on our minds, whatever it might be. Lord, come and do what you want to do in us. We open ourselves up to you. We know that we need you, God. Lord, we're sorry for those times where we have just said, Lord, change me and fill me. And we haven't wanted to, to go out. We haven't said, send me. Lord, give us fire in our hearts. Give us courage to take this message into the world. Lord, fill us to overflowing that we would represent you well in the world. Lord, transform us from fear to peace. Anyone who's just living under a weight of fear this morning, we pray, Spirit of God, come. Bring transformation. Let your peace that surpasses all understanding come in. Have your way, Lord. Change us, fill us, send us. As we sing, let's just, just let God continue to do what he's doing in you. Let him do what he wants to do. And um, if you've got something that you want to share, just come and give me a nudge and we'll make space for that.
I've really been struggling for the past couple of weeks, um, probably going into myself a little bit. Um, but we are getting ready to go on holiday to America and um, I, I had a, note, um, a dollar in my hand on Wednesday and um, I turned it over and in it, it, on the back it says, in God we trust and it's not to trust when we're all happy and we're all sad, it's we have to trust God um, in the bad and um, you know, I haven't got it in mind. I have to trust that God has got it and that is the way that it's it's gonna be forever. Let's use this next song to um, ask God to um, intervene, ask him to refine us, ask him to restore us and use it as an offer of prayer. Thank you, for Claire, for your sharing now. Karen, if we go straight to uh, Refiner's Fire, please. By my heart. Let's just sing this together as a prayer, asking God to change, transform, as we've learned this morning. Purify. teachers to be set apart for you. Prepare us to do your will. May we receive your Holy Spirit 
to empower us to do your will. May you lead us to the places, to the people you want us to be with. May we bring your light into those situations. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be seen. before while we were worshipping of a person like really surrendered on the floor to God, really, I don't know, humbled and surrendered. But then I saw um, blueprints, like kind of blueprints all around them of this like, and it wasn't just one, I felt like it was a few like dotted around. And the blueprints were like of these amazing buildings. Um, and the only, the only thing I can think that it means is that God wants to do new things because I guess a blueprint is like a new design of 
a building, isn't it? Like in people's lives to build them up in ways that they've never been built before. So if you do feel, or even if you don't feel like you're kind of on the floor and humbled, that's a good thing because, you know, God wants to do these amazing things in our lives. And if you don't feel like you are there, get there. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. So we'll finish our time of just singing worship. Um, let's join together um, declaring um, what God has done through the cross, what Jesus has done in his resurrection and who we are in him, in that truth. Let's sing together in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone is solid ground. Burn through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness. Torn by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness lay, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me. With the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. On life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We stand in your power this morning. We stand under your sovereign hand, under your lavish grace, knowing that you are good, that your love endures forever, and that nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can separate us from your love. So we stand in your power, God. Um, as we as we declare um, God's goodness and our standing in him, let's just bring a few people and situations before the Lord this morning. We pray for those in our church family who are suffering with COVID this morning. We pray for your healing and restoration to come to their bodies. Uh, Lord, we pray for those with ongoing health issues 
this morning who haven't been able to be with us in person for a while. Uh, Lord, we pray for Ukraine, for peace to come, for your spirit to move powerfully uh, in that situation. Lord, we pray for, uh, we thank you for all that's gone on in Easter week here in this community. Uh, we thank you for lives changed. We thank you for testimonies shared. We thank you for seeds sown, gospel shared with the community. We pray that you would take all this and grow it for your kingdom, God. Let it bring lasting fruit. We thank you for all you're doing, God. We thank you that until you return or call us home, we can stand under you and in your goodness and in your grace. We praise you this morning, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, that is the, the end of our time together this morning. So uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you to everyone who has served this morning. Thank you to those who've joined us on Zoom. And uh, hopefully that's worked. If you were on Zoom, let us know in a nice way how it was for you this week. If it was any better than better than, than VMix, we're, we're trying different things and trying to get it right. So um, thanks for being with us. Enjoy the sunshine, everyone. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.